Welcome to the last episode about Australia of our travel journal. After three months of traveling from Perth on the west coast all the way south to Adelaide and Melbourne, to the island of Tasmania and back on the mainland further east and north to Sydney, Brisbane and Bundaberg, which is close to the Great Barrier Reef, today we'll take you along to visit one of Australia's icons, Steve Irwin's Australia Zoo. Steve Irwin? Who's that, you ask? Well, we tell you, he was the famous crocodile hunter. You've heard of that wildlife documentary television series, haven't you? A show created by Steve Irwin and his wife Terry Irwin ran from 1996 until 2007, showcasing Steve Irwin's daring interactions with wildlife, particularly reptiles like crocodiles and snakes, to educate viewers about animal behavior, conservation and the importance of protecting wildlife. Anyways, Australia Zoo was originally founded by Steve Irwin's parents in 1970 as a reptile park. Nowadays, it's a renowned wildlife conservation facility and major tourist attraction on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland, Australia. When we arrived at 9 a.m., the parking lot was already half full, so we started our exploration at the Wildlife Hospital. Here you can see wild and captured animals, like koalas and birds, being treated by professional vets. It was so interesting to get kind of a backstage glimpse of an animal hospital. With online tickets and our digital wallets, we then headed over to the entrance of the actual zoo. And here we were surprised by long queues, which we couldn't skip even though we already had tickets. So we used the waiting time to get show times of the day, as well as a map. Good God, you control me. Your touch so real, lips so holy. The starlight's shining for me. Burning so bad, I'll never look away. Oh, you pull me back, gravity came to your light again, and I'm losing track. Inside the zoo, we enjoyed a range of animal exhibits of typical Australian animals, including crocodiles, koalas, and kangaroos, but also exotic species like tigers, elephants, or giraffes. Supernova, when you're It's a supernova, like starlight Would interactive experiences such as animal encounters or behind-the-scenes tours be something for you to enjoy? Here you have various options. My heart beats red for your eyes blue wildlife shows. A visit of the so-called Crocoseum was at least our favorite. Crocodiles are being fed here. He's honed in on those flashes, those sort of fresh changes I'm sending out of the water. Gets them nice and fired up. You can put hit one right on my location. So now he is all, all angry. Good luck, Laura. Oh, I do. No, no, no worries, mate. Oh. Let's go. Hey, 
What are you doing? Sometimes it's worse and more nerve-wracking when they do nothing. I hate it for you. Well, you think about it. He will, just like in the wild, enter back into his big hunt and stalk mode where he goes back under, goes back into that camouflage position where he doesn't disturb the surface, doesn't make any bubbles or ripples. As he was out, and you probably see as he comes through this shallow part, this is slightly below knee depth in here, his, the lumps and bumps on his back will show. So as he moves under the water and the back, the water moves over his back, it creates currents and countercurrents that cancel each other out. So as long as his back is completely under the water, so there those lumps start to stick out, it's quite shallow. But when they do go under, they are what stop any ripples, any bubbles. So as long as the water is murky enough, and you can't see it. It could, it could be knee deep water, and you could have a crocodile cruising through without disturbing the surface at all. So it relies on that camouflage, being that unseen predator, to ensure that the animal is making a mistake. If any animal in North Australia, any mammal, is smart enough to know this. Oh, he's what he's be doing. Now I'm with him. That'd be amazing. So cool, right? Absolutely love it. And over this side of the habitat, he can literally, from beneath the water surface, strike out and hit this fence in one go. So you never feel too comfortable standing over here. But that's what he relies on. He relies on the animal being close to the water's edge and him doing that massive explosion out of the water to grab it and he can pretty well. And the only edge of paper. There we go, Hayden Boyd, sitting up for it, getting ready, get on. Oh, sitting down, oh, I missed that one. See that? But he's got that best chance. Oh, you got it. Hayden, 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 Hayden. You are so funny today, Jasper. I'm going to throw this one there, eh? Oh, I Give it up for it. Having extensively travelled through Australia and having especially enjoyed many animal encounters, our visit of Australia Zoo felt like a great summary.
learned that Steve Irwin, the crocodile hunter, tragically died in 2006 when he was fatally injured by a stingray while filming an underwater documentary. His legacy continues though through his family who remain active in wildlife conservation and education as well as through the ongoing work at Australia Zoo. Our time down under is also coming to an end. From Sydney we make our way to another continent. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and subscribe for more travel vlogs coming up. In case of any questions, please don't hesitate to comment below. We are happy to help find answers and hope to see you next week here on our travel journal. Yeah.